Welcome back guys. As promised in this video I will discuss what links have to do with the inode numbers. So just open the terminal. I will tell you by an example. Control Alt plus caps in T. Got it. Now yeah. Let us now see what links have to do with inode numbers. Remember the linking part that we have already discussed uh, to create a link for a file it means to access this file with the another name in simple terms okay so if we choose to rename a file all that unix does is associate the new name with the same inode number and forget the old name so this is if we choose to rename a file this association may be thought of as a link with the inode number or in essence with the file now for example a file called um, a file that I will create you first I will go to desktop CD desktop and touch file and as you can see ls minus l this has zero links what um yeah it should be zero only <laughs> what I'm talking about now I have I will create another file with the same file access I will create a link for this file file okay with the name file 2 now check it with ls minus l oh sorry that for this was on this was the bytes remember and these are the links that's why i was thinking what the hell why it is uh, having a zero link okay never mind come back to this now uh, initially it, uh, it has only the one link and now it i whenever i type this command and i have created link another link with file 2 so these files both files have been listed with two links not it old stuff now old stuff now assuming that what was i'm assuming nothing else now i would like to show you the inode number yeah so just type the ls minus i and the file name if you want ls minus i as you can see this is the node name which is associated with this file again if i do the ls minus i for file 2 as you can see the same inode number has been associated with file 2 so there is no coincidence the inode numbers of file and file 2 have to be the same as they are referring to the same file the file is physically present in only one location but can be accessed by either of its two names what if you are uh, what if you were to delete delete file that is i would say something like remove file this file i'm talking about okay so i have deleted it this would tell linux to discard the name file as a link to the file with the same inode number that is this inode number however the file is still very much present on the disk the root directory no longer holds an entry for file but the other link file2 is intact hence the file is also intact and will remain so until all the links to it are deleted. If we use rm to delete file only then will the file will be physically deleted. Okay. So this was the concept of what links have to do with the inode numbers. They will offer same inode numbers and if any one of the file will be deleted the other file will be intacted. Okay. Now comes down to some disk related commands. One of the major concerns of the system administrator of a Linux installation is efficient hard disk management. The main concern is 
hard disk management. Since the Linux file system is installed usually on a hard disk, its upkeep before its upkeep is of primary importance. The system administrator has to regularly monitor the integrity of the file system and the amount of disk space available. Neglecting this may eventually lead to the system crash. Let's see what are the commands usually used for the upkeep of hard disk. Checking disk free space. If we want to see how much of the disk is being used and what part of it lies free, Unix has for us a command called df that implies for disk, uh, disk free or it implies for disk file system. Okay, so mainly it, it implies for disk free. This displays df, the command displays the information of device name here, total blocks here. These are the total blocks. These are this is the total disk space used and available disk space use percentage uh, how much uh, the disk has been used in percentage and mount points on a file system. Got it? So this is these are different device names that I am on and these are you can say device names and file system device name file systems only that uh, my hard disk usually uh, that my hard disk contains these file systems okay so we have another command with df say df minus a it is also same as df command but it also displays information of dummy file system along with all the file system disk usage and their memory utilization as you can see here okay got it another command of oh sorry another switch or option available with df command is minus h it is used to display sizes in human readable formats that is 1kb 2 MB, 3 GB for a, I'm, I'm taking the example as you can see here. Uh, these, this is the human readable format, but this is not the human readable format. These are represented in blocks and in odd numbers. Okay, so yeah, minus H provides the human readable, human readable code and size. Okay, so. 4KB have been used for UDV, uh, UDEV and available is for 53MB. M stands for MB, K stands for KB, G stands for GB. Okay. Another command to see the information of only device or home file system in human readable format will be like DF minus H and then home, not hope its home okay now you can see here the same result but of home only okay as you can see here another command to display all file system information and usage in 1024 byte blocks that is one that is the block size will be 1k here will be like df minus k option now you can see the file system, uh, sorry, it displays all the file system information and usage in 1KB, as you can see here, here, 1KB blocks, okay. In order to display all these information in MB, you can simply use TF minus M and you got it 1m blocks this represent 453 mb this is 94 mb okay this is 23365 mb and these were in kb okay now comes down to gb 
So simply use df minus h as we have already discussed it. It by default represented in gb. Uh, what the hell? Mm -hmm, sorry, df minus h and then any directory name. Oh, sorry, any file system name. Okay, so just as we did in home example, I have checked for home, and as you can see, this is by default in gb only. Okay, so for kb, use k option, for mb, use minus m option, for gb, use minus h option. Now to display the information of number of used inodes and their percentage for the file system, we have the switch called df minus i. So you can see here inode numbers have been displaced and what inodes, uh, number of inodes, number of used inodes also has been displayed here, number of free inodes and in percentage. Okay. So these commands may be required while programming. These are really helpful commands. Now next I want to discuss the command is to check file system type of your system. That is df minus capital of T. It will list all the types of your system. That is file system type. Okay. So these are the file systems or you can say device names and these are the types, their types. Got it? Or uh, for any more further options and commands if you want to learn more, we have the help option df minus minus help. And as you can see all these commands can be used. Got it? Now comes down to du command which stands for disk used okay so since df report the disk space available in the file system as a whole whereas this du command that is du reports the disk space used by the specified files and directories for example if i type du and just press enter and as you can see what has been going on Hmm. Here, du is reporting the number of blocks used by the current directory denoted by dot. As you can see here, dot all these starts with dot. So, it is reporting the number of blocks used by the current directory only. Okay, and current directory is denoted by dot as we have discussed earlier. And not only the dot, not only the dot but also uh, it uh, sorry i will repeat again this du is reporting the number of blocks used by the current directory denoted by this dot and those used by subdirectories within the current directory got it now so thus when invoked with any without any argument it assumes that blocks occupied by current directory and the directories lying within it are to be reported so if we specify a directory then du descends down this directory locating any subdirectories lying in it and reports the blocks used by the directory and the subdirectories for example du slash wave this one this was the directory in the root directory as we have already shown here and as you can see here the number of blocks occupied by each subdirectory within the dev directory as well as those occupied by dev are displayed if we want only the blocks occupied by the directory and not those occupied by the subdirectories within it we can simply say du minus s and then directory name Dave. As you can see here, cannot read directory. This was the uh, this file has. We have do, we don't have any permission to read this, but overall we find the result. And if we find any of this permission denied, just use sudo, sudo, and then any command, you will get the permission. If you are the admin or if you are the super user, got it? So do you? 
can be often used to single out directories that occupy large amount of disk space got it in the practical purposes now the last command that i would like to discuss is u limit so u limit okay so once i press this and hit enter it says unlimited so what is this u limit though most files in unix occupy few tens of blocks in some odd case a program may go awry and create files which occupy huge amount of disk spaces sometimes things might take such a bad turn that the file might occupy several megabytes of disk space and ultimately harm the file system to avoid creation of such files unix uses a variable called u limit that is u u limit it stands for user limit and contains a value which signifies the largest file that can be created by the user in the file system so the largest file size that can be created in the file system by the user so in my system it is unlimited if i so this implies that user can create a file of unlimited size got it uh, it is not necessary that it will be unlimited in your system also uh, it may contain some value for example um, let's say 2000 not 2000 that will be too small 2097152 suppose this is the random uh, number that will be displayed in your system so this implies that that number would simply says that the user cannot create a file whose size is bigger than that random number that i have spoke bytes or you can say yeah bytes only so this uh, whatever the value will be represented here these will be in bytes and you cannot create files larger than this file got it if you happen to create a file which exceeds this size that is the specified size the size would be curtailed to that uh, that size only and the program creating this file would be aborted or stopped got it a user can reduce this value by saying simply u limit and then value just i am doing it u limit and then suppose one and now here onwards no file can be created whose size is bigger than 512 bytes because one represent 512 bytes got it once reduce this value now uh, once reduced that i am that i have reduced with this command this value remains effective till the user doesn't log out thus the change will be effective only for the current session and the system will return in will return to its default value when you log out and you know how to log out you know it i have discussed it just press control d and you will you just logged out of the terminal and of your system also okay so whenever you will restart the system and it will ask you for the username and password both because you have been logged out okay so yeah that's it for this video hope you like this video please give a thumbs up please rate comment and subscribe and this is it for file system whole file system unit and we will discuss some more commands useful for programming and yeah bye bye